Okay, everyone. Uh, sorry, this is part two. Uh, the first one got cut off, so my apologies on that. We were looking at characteristics of market system. Uh, there's quite a few. Um, if we just note the last uh, two, um, without a doubt, there's a limited government, um, really a government that's primarily protecting private property uh, and also the use of uh, money. Uh, one of the things um, that we uh, look at in terms of economic systems are those uh, five or at least three uh, fundamental questions. You know, what will be produced? How will it be produced? And, um, you know, how is it going to be distributed? Uh, in a market-based system, uh, we can answer those questions. So first of all, what will be produced? Um, the uh, decision about what is going to be produced in society, how many shoes, how many water bottles, how many textbooks and whatnot, uh, is really decided by consumers. We refer to this as consumer sovereignty uh, or dollar votes. You know, as we as consumers go about uh, doing our purchases, um, we are indicating, you know, to producers uh, what it is uh, that we want to be produced. If we don't buy something, that sends a big signal, uh, don't produce this anymore. If we continue to buy something and there seems to be, you know, increasing demand for something, uh, it's sending a signal uh, to continue to produce something. Okay, so consumers have um, a strong role in that first uh, part of the, uh, you know, series of questions. For how will the goods be produced? This is something that we would suggest producers are really deciding. Uh, producers are going to uh, produce goods basically at minimal cost, right? It's in a uh, producer's interest to produce goods at um, a minimal cost. So using technology to get a great deal of productivity and then also um, looking at the prices of inputs, the prices of necessary resources and ensuring uh, that those prices can be as low as possible. So minimizing the cost uh, by using very efficient techniques. Uh, this last question about who will get the output, or it's the third question uh, of the, um, you know, kind of questions about economic systems, who will get the output? Um, so in the case of a market-based system, um, not everyone gets the output. You know, the only individuals who get the output are those who have the ability and the willingness to pay to get a product, okay? So uh, lots of people might um, be interested in accessing, for example, healthcare, or might be interested in, you know, getting uh, new pairs of sneakers or whatever the products might be, but only those consumers who are interested in the product um, and able uh, uh, to afford the product will actually get the product. And so we see here um, that ability to pay uh, very much depends on income. So, you know, a market economy is uh, shuffling and allocating uh, goods to consumers, uh, but some of that is based on um, income. Uh, how will the system progress? Uh, we see a couple different ways that um, we see economic growth, uh, technological advance, so uh, innovations, right? So having cameras embedded in cell phones rather than uh, Kodak uh, cameras. Uh, as a result, we see sometimes industries getting uh, left behind. Um, so creative destruction, something that uh, Charlie Whelan talked about in his book that you all read over the summer, the technological advance. It's just that natural process of innovation um, in some cases, you know, innovating uh, something completely new uh, and older industries going by the wayside. But that process uh, enables a great deal of economic growth um, and certainly capital uh, accumulation. Uh, something else that Adam Smith talks a, a lot about um, as a way to in, 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 um, uh, to grow an economy. Um, how will the system change? Uh, there's a variety of ways in which a system uh, in a market can change. Consumer taste can change, changes in technology, changes in resource prices. Um, you know, what uh, Adam Smith would advocate in terms of how the system changes is that um, there's a lot of mechanisms uh, built in for self-correction. So even if uh, there becomes uh, changes in demand or changes in prices, uh, the system will kind of self-correct. And that's like kind of natural uh, in a market and one of the, you know, kind of uh, favorable things about a market. Uh, the role of government in a market, um, it's not, and this is, you know, just kind of speaking for most, uh, you know, uh, societies today that are mixed economies, that pure market uh, model is generally a hypothetical one, you know, that we use uh, for graphing in uh, econ, uh, and it's a useful uh, model to consider consider in terms of a uh, pure market, but in reality, uh, even, um, you know, uh, economic systems that strongly favor uh, a market, 
generally uh, see a strong role for government. Sorry, I keep flipping that. Um, the government uh, might be uh, actually um, addressing market failures. Uh, so despite the fact that the market has all of these favorable characteristics, uh, it does uh, at times fail. So uh, monopoly could be a market failure. Um, there might be a variety of market failures uh, because um, uh, perhaps income inequality, a variety of things that are market failures uh, could be resolved by government um, laws or government interventions. Uh, sometimes externalities, another example of a market failure, um, might um, be addressed uh, by a government uh, policy, uh, government subsidy or government tax, a variety of government interventions. Okay, and of course, you know, too much government participation can also have an impact, you know, on uh, the market. Uh, but we largely, you know, would look at, you know, this argument that government certainly can, uh, you know, intervene in a market uh, fairly successfully, especially in a mixed uh, economy. Again, in a more, you know, laissez-faire, uh, pure market model, we would see a very small role for government. Uh, features of a command economy. Uh, this is something that um, is really uh, important um, as kind of looking at maybe the opposite uh, type of economy um, on the spectrum, you know, farthest away from a pure market model where all of the decisions about, you know, who uh, is going to, you know, decide what to produce and, uh, you know, who is going to decide how things get allocated and how do things get allocated. In the case of a command-based economy, there's largely um, a government that owns all of the resources. So imagine if every single um, producer was really a government producer, or the government was in control of all of the production, owned all the factors of production, and owned uh, largely um, all of the decisions around uh, production. So, you know, who decides what to produce? The government. Who decides how things get produced? The government. You know, who decides who gets what? The government. And usually this entire um, decision making that the government might do in a command based economic system, you know, has to do with a uh, central plan, a central plan that often gets dictated several years in advance. So how many shoes, you know, will the society need in three years? How much wheat? how much uh, weaponry, uh, how much capital goods, how much consumer goods. And so everything about a command economy is decided um, in advance according to a central plan and dictated largely by the government. And so uh, there is not the mechanism, and this is a really key thing about uh, command-based systems, um, because things are dictated by the government, it becomes a series of uh, quotas and meeting uh, government, um, you know, uh, rules in terms of what to produce. Uh, prices are not used as signals for allocation of goods. Um, largely, uh, goods could be uh, rationed. There might be um, the same price for a variety of goods. Uh, Charlie Whelan, you know, talks about this, uh, you know, when he's looking for cigars at one point in Cuba, you know, that the price, you know, is always the same, right? There isn't kind of a, um, you know, mechanism of price uh, being used as signals uh, for buying and selling. There's also no uh, role for competition um, because that's not uh, how ultimately uh, there's decisions about, um, you know, what will get produced and uh, who gets what. Um, and keeping uh, things kind of without uh, abuses, the uh, command-based system is, uh, you know, the opposite of competition. Uh, the government is largely the consolidated uh, power that is uh, making decisions about what gets produced, you know, who produces it, everything about all of those uh, questions. Um, the Soviet Union in the 1950s is probably a really good example of a command-based system and one that becomes uh, ultimately really challenged. Um, so uh, initially, um, maybe, uh, you know, under Lenin, we see a variety of different uh, types of economic uh, systems as there's like this movement uh, toward um, something that, you know, under uh, Stalin becomes much more of a command-based system. Uh, in the Soviet Union, we see uh, Stalin's five-year, you know, central plan, uh, the idea of collective uh, farming, and a great deal of um, having uh, the government really uh, industrialized quickly 
and a lot of the production controlled by government for the purpose of industrializing society, um, catching up to the West in a sense, and then uh, largely also creating um, the uh, central plan uh, for consumer goods. But um, one of the issues that we see in a command-based economy, uh, and there tend to be two specific uh, issues, one is a coordination problem, uh, really deciding output targets for all of the goods and then arranging for phases of production. So, you know, how hard would it be uh, for a large scale society, say the Soviet Union, to be able to decide years in advance uh, what types of consumption goods uh, the public might need um, and, you know, exactly how all of that production could be coordinated. So every single, you know, part, every single um, you know, maybe uh, input every single resource, you know, would have to be um, aligned as part of a uh, larger, you know, process um, that gets done in a very coordinated fashion, uh, because this is all organized centrally by one, you know, quote unquote command, uh, it ends up not necessarily moving as seamlessly as it might in a market. Okay. So um, these output targets are often um, not correct when it comes to uh, how much uh, consumers might need, what types of goods need to be produced, how much of those goods to produce. Uh, so the allocation tends to be off and we see a lot of uh, surpluses and shortages. So surpluses in terms of goods people don't want, shortages in terms of uh, goods that people don't have enough of. Uh, there's also an incentive um, problem um, because there is um, incentives not necessarily uh, to, um, you know, sell a particular uh, product uh, for a higher price, you know, for a profit. Uh, most of the individuals who are uh, being paid by the state um, to produce uh, goods are um, incentivized by following what quotas, you know, the state wanted them to produce, not necessarily to produce what the public wants. Those become two different uh, incentives uh, and things get, um, you know, kind of misaligned uh, and there's a lot of distortion in what gets uh, produced. And there's also very little uh, growth because there is not a great deal of innovation. Um, you know, there is uh, in some cases innovation that's state um, funded and state controlled, uh, but in terms of uh, consumer goods, uh, there ends up being not necessarily as much, um, you know, innovation. Uh, there's definitely remnants of the command-based system today to some degree in uh, quite a few uh, societies, okay? Uh, I hope that that helps, and this is one of these images uh, that is kind of interesting if you look at um, uh, satellite, you know, photography of South Korea and North Korea, you know, at uh, nighttime, you can kind of get a sense of some of the, um, you know, activity, economic activity, different um, activity that's happening in uh, South Korea, uh, much less so, you know, in North Korea. And one of the things that we see in a market-based uh, system is largely um, a great deal of economic activity uh, that is showcasing, you know, growth. And that's one of the things uh, in a command-based economy, uh, we tend to have that um, issue of coordination, um, lots and lots of um, backlog um, in the production uh, process because things are not necessarily um, well uh, aligned to getting to where it needs to be at the given time where it needs to be. It's all decided way in advance, you know, by one uh, command and that becomes uh, problematic. Okay, I hope that this video helps and I will see you in class.